Live from San Antonio, Texas. This is In the Building with Mike Taylor and Rudy J. Well, they're already mad because we didn't get a members only on Friday or Thursday. Are they talking shit? Oh yeah. Hey, if I'm gonna pay six bucks a month, do I get do I get ninety cents back? Because Rudy wasn't in town and y'all didn't do members only. God forbid one of us go out of town. How you doing, man? Man, I'm 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 holding up, man. I'm a little tired, but I'm fine. All right, so I lost track. I, lost. I didn't even know you were in South Carolina until you just told me before the show started. So you're in South Kakalaki, the home of the 32 and 0 South Carolina. Do they call them Game Hens? The girls' basketball team. I'm assuming they're Game Hens. Wow! Wow! No, they're cocks. You could, well, <laughs> couple of, <laughs> couple of them. Don't maybe. say that, Mike. Don't say that. <laughs> no, nah, man. Yeah, I got to Cackalack yesterday. All right. And so I lost lost two hours of sleep. Damn, man. So I know. The jump ahead, and then mm-hmm. I moved to East Coast time. So. Yeah, I'm at. Uh, I'll be at Shaw Air Force Base. I'm at Shaw Air Force Base till at least Wednesday, till Wednesday. Okay, let's let's start right there then, because I, I know we're not we're not at liberty to get into everything you're doing for yeah, the yeah, United no, States cool. Air Force. But you've been posting. You've been posting. Yeah, exactly. Tell us what. Tell us what you're allowed to tell us. Where the hell are you? What are you doing? What's going on with you? All right, so I started off in Little Rock at Little Rock Air Force Base. Um, so it's a 10-episode series. It'll be coming out in October. Um, again, I'm not at liberty to go into details about the show, but I'll be going to 10 different Air Force bases over the next three months. End of May, I should end of May I should be done. I mean, again, like when I leave here, when I leave South Carolina on Thursday, so at Thursday after our show, I'm going to get on a plane, come home, I'll be back at home for like a week and a half, two weeks. Mm-hmm. Then I'll head out to, to a couple of other bases. So we'll be recording at two different bases over eight day span until the end of May. So yeah, you I mean again, I posted pictures. You saw me in you know on the flight line, which so here's the thing. When you record a TV show for the United States Air Force, one, uh hell of a background check, and two, you have a like we literally have an escort. While we're on base, everywhere we go. And depending on the foot, like they want to see the footage when you leave. Mm-hmm. They Well, not even when you leave, as you're going. This way, if you accidentally record something that you're not supposed to, you delete it right there on the spot. I mean, this is high level, like obviously no drones, right? I mean, mm-hmm. that just, that's just duh. Yeah. And you know, you just gotta watch what you record, watch what you say, watch what you do, especially like when I was in Little Rock, when I'm on a flight line, like a literal flight line for full of C-130s, and you know they're letting us in. Like we could only get in the cockpit if a pilot was in the cockpit with us. So we're actually trying. We're shooting this TV show in a cockpit with three camera people, a pilot, and my big ass. You know what I mean? So it's crazy. I mean, it's it's cool. LG, and then that this is the only thing that I underestimated. And LG shot a series before. I didn't know how long the days were because when you're setting up cameras and lighting and move your face and move your head and do this and say it again, it's like these days, like, you know, I'm I'm, I'm going on three straight 12 hour days of shooting and going to different locations. And I don't like that lighting, stand over there. And you and I come from a world where we're used to getting shit on one take Mm-hmm. So I'm hitting, I'm nailing shit in one take, right? But then they're like, okay, well, we need backups. And it just deteriorates. Oh. <laughs> you have to nail it. You know what I mean? Because now you're thinking, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying, Mike. Yeah, now you're sure. thinking it, and it's just like, fuck, fuck, damn it, shit. But that's the power of television and editing. You can keep doing it, but then you're wasting time. So it's a great experience. I'm not complaining. Um, but I'm definitely, I definitely underestimated. Uh, how much time it was going to take mm-hmm. and the days. So yeah, I'm in South Carolina now up next. Right. The end of March is uh, Vegas and Georgia. Damn. So are you going to wind up in Colorado Springs at the Academy? Absolutely. Wow. Dude. So that one will be, the, that one, that one, yeah, that one will be together. So there's a space mm-hmm. force in Colorado Springs called Peterson. 
going to yeah. go from Peterson to the Academy. Okay. Yeah, Dang, that's man. but I don't okay. I, that's in May. That's in May. That's all the way okay. in May. But you're not allowed to say what your what the show is about yet. What the show's about. No. I want I know. But okay. it's it's cool. I mean, I'm I mean, yeah. I mean you might know. LG what? might know, but <laughs> I don't know. I you haven't it, told it's me. It's about that. Rudy fucking J. That's what that's it's right. about. That's right. Yeah, there you go. J. There you go, LG. Yeah. And I anticipate uh, okay, I hope you're spreading the word about your podcast come back on. in Texas. Come on, man. Where you go, sir. Come on. Right, come on, good. man. Right. You are good. And then and, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. For sure. How have y'all been, man? How was the ringer? I, it looked packed. It looked exciting. How talk talk to me. How did the ringer go? Well, he's already texting my ass all day today, wanting us to do two more shows. So it went fine. We didn't need you. It was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. No, it was hey. great. It was great. I hey, mean, they invited. Uh, it, Johnny... was, it was. It was back to. It was. It was spring break night for teachers, and it was effing packed. Which I don't know how much that had to do with us, but it was packed, and it made us look good. So we had a good time. And uh, Did, uh, Johnny was probably a little overwhelmed, but because uh, he's why used you to say doing. That? Because he ain't used to working with Mike fucking Taylor. That's why. He ain't used to having people show up and care about his stuff. <laughs> and it's not his fault. It's it's the people he's worked with in the past. I'm kidding. I'm giving I'm giving people shit. Hey. No, no, it was oh, good. Wait, wait, well, well, man. I want to punch you. Okay, we well, let's get it all the way now? then. It's the Orlando let's Kill the Punch way. of the God Day. Let's just do it now. I right, go right ahead. Punch me. I need I need you to pay more attention to the chat. I'm chiming in on the chat on Friday, and you ain't said a goddamn word. I'm like, goddamn, Mike. I'm trying to be a part of this shit. Wait a minute. I called him. Yeah, what, and what the, did you say? No, not the text chat. I'm talking about on the actual YouTube feed. Oh. Oh, I'm bad. LG <laughs> was talking to me. LG was talking to me. All LG right. was like, hey. He backed me up on this. I mean, I got a lot going on running we're on a remote. I'm got I've got I've got a camera in front of me. I got a, a guy I've never worked with. I gotta make sure I get the raffle done and <laughs> I gotta stay on task and all this kind of all thing. Right. All I knew was and the way I the, I didn't my laptop was not set up where it had the chat on it in my defense. Right. Well, in your de in oh. lack of your defense, you didn't bring your laptop. You didn't pull have it out. <laughs> no, I didn't. I, di I I didn't anticipate that I would need it and I didn't an I didn't anticipate you'd be watching it. So I thought I thought you'd be busy working. And when I found out you were on it, I'm like, well, why the fuck ain't he connected doing the show then? If you can, if you can I get tried. on the chat, why I called. the show? I called, but LG was busy. I called this thing that I'm on now. I don't know what it's called, but it just, <laughs> nothing happened. Okay. But uh, yeah, it's like, I didn't, I didn't have it. I had it turned <laughs> off because I didn't know you were going to come on. You see what I'm saying? Well, yeah, I was yeah, like, yeah. damn. I was like, damn, I'm done. Well, to let be me, to be fair, be the internet there is isn't great either. So you might have, if I put you out, it might have crashed the entire thing. Oh, at the ringer, but yeah, I like, yeah. I feel like it would have fucked up the vibe. I, I tried. I was like, you it know, would let me just try to get in. The well, thing like, is, nobody like, would have been able to see you. They would have just heard this voice coming out of nowhere. See, that's weird. Yeah, mm. that's weird. You know what I mean? But I tried, yeah. and I was like, okay, well then, I was just, and I was like, uh, boomer sooner, roll tide, fucking with Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Y'all can't even see it. <laughs> I knew you were watching. Did you see my uh, my beautiful, heartfelt man to man address to you? No, I missed it. Uh, I did missed you that punch part. out? What'd you All say? Right. Well, when I'm, I found, what'd you say? When I found out, now you're gonna feel bad about punching me now, because when I found out that you were watching, I'm like, oh, cool, because we were raffling off a hat. An in the building hat, and I'm like, you know, mm -hmm. I asked Johnny, you know how you know why we're called in the building, don't you? And he's like, no. So I told the story of this goes back to all those years that Rudy was doing radio and his every morning he would say, I'm in the building, baby. Let's get it. That was Rudy J's yeah. thing. So to show support to Rudy when he agreed to come over and do our show, LG it was LG who came up with the name. And I thought it was I thought it was awesome. And as soon as he said it, that I was it. Too. We were done thinking about it. It's called in the building to pay homage to you, sir. Oh man, I and know. You, of I course, you punch that. out. You missed that part, but and then I punched you. Yeah, and I punched you. That's, fine. Yeah, that's, okay. punch you. that's, that's kind of fucked that's up. Fine. Yeah, it's sorry. Right. We gave that. away the hat. That's all right. That's fine. I'm, I'm used yeah, to it. So. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm I, punching I, you. I you I'm punching hiking. you. Why? No, Why? hang on. We can talk about hiking later. I'm punching you, man. Okay. For because so Rudy texts me every morning stuff he wants to get to, and if you really are about to. 
make this argument that I think you might be making here in a minute. Com- oh, no. Comparing Luka Doncic to the Big O. I mean, you, we really well, I mean, got to do that. Okay, I'm going to punch you for comparing Luka Doncic to Oscar fucking Robertson. Go right ahead. Uh, is, is he not? No. He's, I mean, six straight 35 plus point triple doubles. Man, they didn't play defense back then either. He's the only guy they got. Why did that thumb that? bubble pop up? And when I, I put something my thumb new up with in the, the iPhone. Book, Oh, was that that's Dude, true. Was that and you know you did that. Let me see. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> I don't I've never seen that before. What I don't know that? what that is. Let that happened with Jake clap the other up. day. That's right. Let me see. Just the thumbs up bubble. That is <laughs> what <stupid>. the hell? <laughs> fucking AI. Fucking kukui. What the hell? <laughs> no, no but uh, First of all, Mike, you got to let your hate go for the Mavericks, man. Luka is a real, real good basketball player, dude. Like, that's not easy. Like, look, are they letting him get rebounds? Do they are? Is everybody in on it? Absolutely. Everybody was in on it when Westbrook was doing it. If you watched closely when Westbrook was having all those triple doubles during free throws and anything else, they would all bail so Westbrook could get the rebound. I'm seeing the same thing with the Mavs. So it's it's a little weird, but in the stat books, Micah says 35, 15, and 12. It Six does. times in a row. Correct. Has your I'm pops not... and your brother been calling you about it? Have they been hitting you up and trolling you about it? Well, no, which I'm shocked because normally I, I get told what a god he is and how I right. need to be watching his career every day. Um, and every time he's in the news, it's for acting like an asshole, it seems, to people that don't watch the Mavs on a daily basis. It's not that I hate the Mavericks. I don't necessarily okay. – I don't care about the Mavericks. But I just see a one – I see a half-court offensive-only player whose okay. teams never won anything. If he is this bona fide superstar – because you argued last week, if Wimby was all that, how come they haven't won more games? Why the fuck hadn't Luka Doncic been to the finals yet? He's in his sixth season, I think, is he? Not? Yeah, he went to the. He's done to the Western Conference Finals, Mike. Okay. They lost right. the Phoenix. They lost the Phoenix, but yeah, okay, I got you. Go ahead. I did. They need to do some more winning. You know, and he plays for Dallas, and I don't think people care about Dallas much outside of North Texas. Probably some Mavs fans scattered about throughout the state because of people leaving, but I. He's not on my radar ever. And no, I, I've actually never watched a game that he's played all 48 minutes unless it was against us. And of course, we've been bad wow. the last few years. That's it. I've never, I've seen highlights, bits and pieces here. They don't, they don't go to the playoffs. I don't watch other NBA games until late in the playoffs. You know, I think, okay, I take it back. I probably watched a game. When they did go to the Western Conference Finals, what, two years ago, three years ago? I may have watched it. Was, a uh, game. 21. It was 21. It was 21. 2021. All right. I watched, okay, I watched a decent amount. Now, he's pheno- phenomenal. And what's incredible about him, which the impressive part is, he's not even in great shape. He never looks like he's no. even trying hard. He's a slow plotter and does whatever he wants. It's It comes he easy gets wherever, to him. He gets wherever he wants on the court. And yeah, Mark man. Cuban. Just like he did to Dirk twice. The first time, Dirk, he let Steve Nash go to Phoenix. The second time, he breaks up the 2011 team. This time, Luka Doncic and Jalen Brunson have a fantastic chemistry. They get all the way to Western Conference Finals by, you know, just those two. And Mark Cuban, for whatever reason, ah, we don't believe in Jalen Brunson. And all he did was go to the fucking Knicks and become an all-star. So Mark Cuban has fucked up three t- – God damn it, let me keep my thumb down. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, so Mark Cuban screwed him. Again, I love Kyrie. I love watching Kyrie play if I just want to be entertained for like, yeah. you know, between the legs behind the back. But winning shit without LeBron, mm-hmm. man, you know what I mean? So yeah. I yeah. blame Cuban more than I blame Luka. I do too. I, 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 don't, I think that's fair too. All right, but – and I probably need to watch Luka more, but – I don't know. He just he doesn't nah, strike for what? They're not gonna win anything. They're gonna win anything. He just ex- it's just like if you got nothing to do, mm-hmm. you know, and nothing's on, and you you click past, and Mavs are playing the Bucks. Mm-hmm. Stop down for That's a little fine. bit. Yeah, I will. But I'm, I'm not. Of course, you know, I'm not gonna seek him out. Yeah. Look, winning means more than everything. But I mean, uh, he needs to win. Some, he needs to go to the to the finals. And but right. I also. 
he's just he just seems kind of like a he doesn't seem like a very likable dude. And he's young. Was he twenty oh, five? No. He, he's kind of yeah, a dude. I don't, I don't want to drink vodka with him. No, I think it's vodka. What is he? Slovenia? It's sure. vodka, right? He's is that one of those, He's one of those small. It's, he's Slovenia, list, Latvia, Habatska, Herzegovina, Vienna, Vienna, all those big white. Yeah, you know, he's from that part of the country, <laughs> the world. Damn. So yeah, a little, a little backstory being here on this little Air Force trip, and now mm-hmm. LG, you can appreciate this. So this jacket I have on, the production team made me take it off, and now I see why. Moire. They said, yeah, they said stripes don't like the camera. We're gonna need you to go change, and I was like, what the Hold fuck up. do you mean? Nobody tells me how to dress. I, I was actually gonna ask I, you I, I about that. Change. Yeah, because as yeah. soon as I saw that, like I was it. like. It's called more. Like it. What you're seeing there, the effect of those stripes is called moire. Moire. M O I R E. And yeah, it's awful. It, it doesn't look good on camera. So yeah, no, no there thin stripes like that. All right, I, dude. I, yeah, he was. I'm, like, I'm second guessing like, my watch. Like, he was like, uh, "Camera don't like stripes. Can you change?" I'm, mm-hmm. You know, you know. I think I'm. I, you know, I think I can dress. I'm like, well, hold on, sir. I, what do you, you mean? Can you I it's, a t- it's a nice, ca- nice who, jacket. Who's your boss and who's pay- who's paying you? Are are, ta- are the taxpayers of America paying you for this? What, what, <laughs> who are your Air Force Air Force Services, the DOD. Wow. Yeah, it this is, is the taxpayers. Uh, Interesting. Yeah, shout out to y'all. People are going to be freaking out, wondering what the hell is he doing. Uh, can't yeah, say man. nothing. <laughs> But I'm, I've been posting. I've been trying to keep it. Uh, you know, I've been trying to keep people come along for the ride as much as I can. I ride. Right. Yeah, no, want... it makes it sound cool that you can't tell us. Now it makes me more curious, and we they probably can't wait to know what the hell you are doing, which is kind of cool. I think so. It's all right. Yeah, it's cool, man. Um, but yeah, so no stripes. No okay. stripes. That looked bad. I was looking at my jacket like, damn, it's hurting my eyes. Yeah, no, no thin stripes. And I'm ben rethinking Stripe. my decision to wear a white shirt on these because I'm so white as it is. Why? That's fine. You, sure? you you've been you're missing Hawaii. You had a really really sexy tan when you lived I in know. Hawaii, dude. I know. And I got and I didn't realize how white I had gotten until I saw that picture of my ass crack last week on the roof. <laughs> Highly unfortunate. LG, you punching anybody today? Mm, oh, shit. I'm, good. I'm good. Okay, I'm glad I'm still, you're good. I'm taking That's time three off. times in a row. I know. Wow. He's been happy too. You should have well, seen him. I he punched was... Bubba and Rich the other day. Oh no. Oh, Rudy, did you hear about this? Bubba? Who's Bubba? Yeah. Okay, hang on. Let me get the live spot in. I'm gonna tell this story. Okay, let's, do it. let's all right, do it. All right. All right. So Orlando Kell, if you are in need of a divorce lawyer, that's unfortunate. Fifty percent of the American population that gets married is gonna have to need a divorce lawyer at some point, if not more than one point. And that's where a guy like Orlando Kell comes in. He services Thunderdomers and in the building fans and listeners and subscribers and members. Mention us to Orlando Kell if you are in need of a divorce lawyer. It is 210-775-4995. He handles in the building clients and he really specializes in handling guys. It's hard to be a daddy uh, going through a divorce and Orlando takes that into account. He'll take care of you. Email him directly. It is Orlando Kell law at gmail.com Orlando Kell law at gmail.com. Okay. Yeah. Punch Bubba and rich again for that because they haven't cleared the copyright thing yet. Of course they haven't. <gasps> so we got oh, another, shit. What check happened? this out. So Friday we got a complaint again, or LG got a message saying that another show had filed a copyright complaint against us. A show okay. based in Birmingham, Alabama, two right-wing conservative talk show hosts that probably suck Donald Trump's nuts on the radio every day, <laughs> and they filed a copyright complaint against us, saying that we were playing. They said that we were, we were playing a drop on our show that they had copyrights to, and they're absolutely lying because the the drop they must think it's somebody else because we got that from a news report out of South Carolina where you are playing. You have the drop handy LG. This is the drop. They didn't claim the drop. They claimed the whole clip, the whole clip, the news clip, That's the drop, bullshit. the drop's fine. Yeah. Their show saying that they have rights to that clip. No, they don't. The TV camera crew, the television station that shot that report that day has rights. So why would they file a complaint against us unless they just are mistaken or they're fucking liars and they're thieves, and they want to take money from other podcasts. It's 
bullshit. Well, there's probably well, over there? a thousand videos that use that At news least. clip. Sure. So, th- so think about that. Four dollars from a thousand people that don't file a dispute like we did. That's money in their pockets. There are so. podcasters, Rudy, out there trying to. They're trying to fucking. Wild West money from other shows, and they're lying. It's the second time this has happened to our show. You know what? Month. You know what? So, so this, so that's a hustle in this game, because again, like LG just don't put, tolerate the bullshit. So LG disputes it. Yeah. Thank God we have LG on our team. But what I'm thinking is most of these podcasts, they're like, I ask four bucks. Who gives a shit? So, like, you get, let's say, fuck it, let's say, I mean, again, if you only get 500 people to not dispute it, you're getting two grand maybe two, three times a week. Well, four bucks is just a number I threw out there. Some of these people oh, might be yeah. making thousands of their ad mm-hmm. revenue that gets so, taken away. Sure. So so that's so that's one of the hustles in this game because they can't get sponsors. So they're like, oh, well, we'll just dispute a bunch. That's clearly because it makes no sense. This is twice now that it hasn't made any sense. So that leads me to believe that this is one of the scams within the podcasting game. It absolutely clearly, which is. Which is fucked up. They have 30 days to respond. So, And if they don't, I think we win by default if they don't respond. I what, think, we get see, the the, I think. The, yes. Okay. I think to, to, to stop that shit, LG, I think that you need to have to, like, if you when you do that, you should lose money. All right, like if you did it for 500 people times whatever dollar amount you have, if you did that, I think you should lose it. And that would make people that would deter people from doing that. Dumb I agree. Shit. Yeah, that's right. Well, hopefully we get it back. We'll see. Yeah. It's like if you accuse someone of raping you and it gets proven that you're lying, your ass ought to go to jail. Amen, brother. True. Amen. All right. All right. It's, uh, all right. Texas Cheer Liquor, the official liquor store uh, of this show in the building and love you hard TV. They got seven spots spread out all over the city. It is. Texas Cheer Liquor. All right, and we'll, we'll get back to them in a minute. Um, All right. A reminder to become a member of this show. A reminder to become a subscriber of this show. I don't know why people are picking on us from other towns. Maybe because we're on the radar now, and that's because of our wonderful members and subscribers. If you are a member and or a subscriber, make sure you tell your buddies uh, and all your family about us. And I, 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 I guess it's a badge of honor people are messing with us. Let's keep going. All right? All right. <laughs> Cowboys. Oh, shit. So we, we find out. I, let, I did look, 28 minutes before I mentioned the Cowboys. I, that's, I'm, <laughs> I'm proud of that. All right. So the Cowboys have told the veteran wide receiver, Michael Gallup, essentially, go get your shine box. And what they have done is they, go have, and get your fucking shine box. they have given him permission to seek a trade. No one's going to offer Dallas anything for Michael Gallup because everybody knows that they're going to release Gallup if they can't find a trade suitable for him. So he's going to wind up getting cut. Right. This is another example of the Cowboys and how they let feelings or they, they manage their team scared. I would have never given Michael Gallup the extension they gave him, especially coming off the foot. He's done nothing since he got hurt. They've had to go get other wide receivers in the three years since they gave him the deal. It's another one of these examples of why on earth did you ever give him the money? We all knew it was going to go this way. We all knew. that. All I can think of, man, and you and I have t- debated this yeah. you know, in, in, over the last month, they manage their roster scared. Oh, my God, Gallup can play a little bit. Let's lock him up now. What are you doing? No. No, he benefited from playing with Dak and playing for a pretty good offensive scheme. So, and he had Amari Cooper over there. I mean, Gallup's were you, fine, but he's not, he's not great. Right. Were you against it only because of the injury or just in general? Even let's say he would have never gotten had the surgery or whatever. Mm-hmm. Would you recall? Because it wasn't like it was a, a, a shit ton of money. But Mm -hmm. it was just the injury for you? Yeah, and he's never been even close to the same guy. No, no, not even close. Yeah. And now Dak doesn't trust him. No. It's stupid. So he's going to get cut. And they just, I don't know. I don't know what it is. It's not that they're stupid. I think that they're just afraid. They're afraid of the unknown. And I think we we may talk about free agency some tonight or or a little bit. And I like, I mean, I, I, they're, I, I'm sure when they, whenever they do bring in a free agent, I'm always shocked by it. They are so, they are, they would rather re sign their own hacks and spares mm-hmm. than throw money at a big guy. This whole all in thing, all in means we go get the top free agents according to the rest of the world, but Jerry obviously is not going to do that. 
they just manage their roster scared. They hold the, they they like they hoard the nuts they have, but they're afraid mm-hmm. to go get bigger nuts because then you get it's someone we don't know. We got to bring they're new. We got to develop them. Blah blah blah. This team sucks at free agency, and it sucks at knowing the contract extensions to give out. And that's been proven for years now. And Michael Gallup's the latest example of it. Okay. All right, we'll get Rudy back in a minute. He's lost. He's been, I guess the, Jerry found out I was talking shit about him again and knocked Rudy off. Text Rudy and tell him to get back in here. But I'll just expound upon that, and it's true. They're afraid of the unknown, and they have been for years. Um, it's like, and then when they do finally go get someone in, they send number one draft picks for wide receivers. They, they've screwed up that position for years. They panic when they needed another wide receiver, so they send a one for Amari Cooper. I never would have done that. I don't care that I know that Amari had a solid career here. I know that, um, but I, I was still would I still wouldn't have done the trade. He would have never been a cowboy. I think I hear Rudy. He would have never been a cowboy if it were up to me. And he had a solid career. And you can, and don't tell me. Well, look at the, the they sent the number one, but he had a damn good career. Only then they wind up trading him for a shitty pick to Cleveland. I was talking about the Cowboys. Now they suck at wide receiver. Yeah, they, they like well, people. I bitched about trading a number one pick for Amari Cooper, and I know a Cooper had a oh he had a solid career here, but it wasn't like they won the title or anything. He's only a wide receiver, and they wind up trading him anyway. They just don't know what they're doing at receiver. Ah, uh, you didn't like Brandon Cooks. I mean, is he going to be back? Was it a one-year thing? I'm not even sure if he's back. I mean, this is the thing. The wide receiver room, as far as, like, the market is so screwed up that Brandon Cooks at 12 a year is not as a deal. You know, when Tyreek Hill and Devontae Adams and Stephon Mm -hmm. Diggs are making above 25, you know, and you can get – Cooks was on – I think last year he paid 12 million for him. To me, I'm not mad at that. You know, my question for you is failed NFL GM, former NFL GM, Mike Tannenbaum said one year, eight million, Derrick Henry. Mike Taylor, the GM, says what? Uh I, I do one for eight with Derrick Henry. Yeah. Right? Like something like yeah. that. So you're not you're not anti running back, but you're anti sixteen, fifteen million a year, obviously. Correct. And I never would have franchise tagged Tony Pollard. Um who Tannenbaum says that's what Henry's value is. One, that's what one yeah, that's what that's yeah one for eight. They were specifically like every show on ESPN. Mm-hmm. They did the Cowboys segment and yeah, Derrick Henry came up and he said, "Yeah, I'd do it for one year, eight million bucks." And I said, "You know what? Shit, me too." But there's going to be some team out there that offers more. They're going to offer twelve for two, and he'll take that. If you're, and that's what he right. has to do. If you're running back, you have to take. It don't matter what team you go to. These kids don't get paid anymore. You got to take that. You got to take the most money offered, no matter where you go. Screw winning and team. It's about the the running backs have to get theirs because there's not much out there. So I, they had the, it's, you know, I'm always I have no problem with players being selfish because God knows the teams they're selfish. They don't care about these kids. The union, the, 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 the collective bargaining agreement's awful. You can sign a big deal and get cut tomorrow. If ever there was a position and a player, because I know I, I, can't, I still catch hell for being so anti-running back, but if there were ever a position where you should be stingy, you should be only about you, it's that position. That is the ultimate mercenary's position. Yeah, running back's in, the, in, that, in that realm where it's like you really, you know, we're going to pocket watch you yeah. got when you get to the league, you can't spend any money because they you might not get that second deal. Like you know, mm-hmm. Michael Parsons, the defensive end, quarterbacks, you know, uh, offensive linemen. Yep. You, you know, you you got a little leeway because if you're good, you're gonna get that second deal. Running backs, you gotta be like, hey man, um, I'm broke. <laughs> I might not get it. I might not get a second deal. Y'all don't ask me for shit. Nope. Like I mean, Saquon Barkley has will never see a big boy deal. And no, that's unfortunate. Never. never. Ten years ago, he had gotten Zeke Elliott money. Zeke, Zeke shout out to Zeke. He's the last you, guy to get paid. He duped the shit out of the Joneses. <laughs> like, I'm going to go to Cancun. Fuck y'all. Yep. And that, that was the worst. 
that was the worst contract the Cowboys have signed since probably Romo's deal, maybe. I don't know. They manage scared. That's what they do. All right, it's Texas Cheer Liquor. There are seven locations all over the city. They do not manage scared. Uh, take my word <clears> for <throat> it, and Rudy will agree, because we've both been employees and endorsers of this company, and they're hiring, right? Are, they, are all stores hiring right now? Dang. Yes, Texas. Okay. Texas Cheer Liquor at gmail.com. Send your resumes. Get paid weekly. Every Monday, get the bag. Yeah, go get the bag. And what do you, I guess so? I guess it's all the stuff we do. You may, you'll be running a cash register, stocking. <laughs> um, in my case, moving, moving, moving margarita heavy machines. objects, <laughs> moving margarita <laughs> machines, building shelves. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's easy. It's not. It's not hard at all. But it's, it's a family owned. All. It's a family owned business. The Sings and the Ridleys have been great to me. It's and, Sing, motherfucker. And I am forever grateful to Texas Cheer Liquor. So it's just a good family San Antonio company. And yeah, they're hiring. So if you're not looking for a job, you just want some good booze. They got everything you can eat. It is Texas Cheer Liquor. All the stores have really good selections of allocated high dollar hooch up on the up on the top shelf. But down on the bottom, from the bourbon to the tequila, to the gin, to the vodka, to the cigars, anything you could ever think that a liquor store would have, they got it more. It's the official liquor store of in the building, Texas Cheer Liquor. All right, all right. What else today? I was uh, thinking about you today because you're, you're hanging oh, out shit. with a bunch of Air Force people. Oh, let's just, man. Let's just it's get different. it out of the room. It's okay. different. How many, how many black people have you seen? Damn. So Little Rock, it was scarce, bro. It was uh, Little Rock is Little Rock. You know what I'm saying? Uh, White people. Other, I mean, on the base. other than other than the other than the you know the airmen, shit, uh -huh. bro. Little Rock. Yeah, man, and I, yeah, not many. Okay, not were many. you able to were you able to get out and see the town at all, or were you just stuck on base the whole time? Yeah, we did some shooting out on the town to show the town okay. on the series right. a little okay. bit, but. So look, I'll put it to you like this. <laughs> Listen, true story. I'm not trying to make up shit. I'm not trying to like, you know, just, you know, do stuff for, for a reaction. Yeah. So we go to this place. It's called, because uh, I actually posted it, so it's not a big deal. The Old Mill. So it's this place on the outskirts of Little Rock. It was, that looked cool. Yeah, it's where it was built in 1933, and it's one of the last standing buildings of, that was in Gone with the Wind. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, but check this out. I swear to God, there was 15, 20 people there doing photo shoots and videos. <laughs> Proms, quinces, <laughs> birthdays. <laughs> like, it's the, I guess it's the only place in Little Rock to go to do a photo <laughs> shoot. <laughs> to go do a photo shoot. So I'm like, damn. And so, and then one night we're there in a, what's her name? Is her name Stevie Nicks? Yeah, the great Stevie Nicks. You mean the, the Fleetwood Stevie Mac, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame goddess? Yes, yeah, I'm familiar. She, she was there. She was in town. Like, Doing okay. a show? Okay. Yeah. I was like, oh, they're, they're, oh, Stevie Nicks in town. Who? I don't know who Stevie <sighs> Nicks is. I thought it was a dude. I was like, what does he sing? <laughs> Sounds like a basketball <laughs> player or something. <laughs> See what I'm saying? <laughs> oh. I was See, like, what does he this... sing? What is he and my, saying? But the, the, the guy, the guy who hired me, looked at me like, "Damn, I hired a fucking idiot." It's a no, sheet. And no, no. <laughs> this is the same reaction that you have whenever you mention, I don't know, what was Minister the uh, society? The, no, and the R like, no, the R and B singer that you mentioned several weeks ago, and I had never heard of him, and you got mad at me. Donald something was it? Donald? Oh, Donnell Jones. Donnell Jones. Yeah, I'm like, I have no idea what that is. What is that? You, you, you were so <laughs> disappointed <is> <laughs> in me. <laughs> and I don't know who it is. And so Stevie Nicks is a legend. She's a legend. So Stevie Nicks co-founded Fleetwood Mac, one of the great pop bands of the 70s, and she is oh. in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. She also had a long, illustrious solo career that clearly... I've heard of Fleetwood Mac. I've okay, heard of Fleetwood she was Mac. in Fleetwood. She was married to Mick Fleetwood. They founded the band... They broke up. She went her own way. You can go your own way. That's a white okay. guy. That's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a Fleetwood Mac joke. I know joke. that song. And, okay. I, I just made a Fleetwood Mac joke about them separating. 
Yeah, I've heard that. Okay. Y'all probably heard it because you heard it in the Forrest Gump soundtrack when you saw Forrest Gump. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's where, or a commercial or some shit. Yeah, yeah, I was like, oh, what is he seeing? I was like, I don't know people by name. What is he seeing? <laughs> and the whole the whole room's like, you know, you everybody kind of looks at you at once like, what? Yeah. All right. So have you boys heard the very popular song Landslide that the Dixie Chicks did and the Smashing Pumpkins did? No. Landslide will bring you down. No. Probably. Oh, my love, tell me down. Oh, my God. Uh, well, Probably not. One of her massive hits was a song called Landslide back in the day. We need, so you she's know making a ton of money off of it. Fuck ton, because the Smashing Pumpkins did the song. And right. then the Dixie Chicks redid the song. And they were beautiful. Both of them were beautiful covers. But that's an old Stevie Nicks tune called Landslide. So it just occurred to me. We got a we got a bit that is just sort of this this bit has just showed up. It's coming to our laps here. You I gotta start making Rudy do white people shit. You do. We do. I think it'd be a good bit. Cause yeah. I, I I'm I, again, hell, I don't feel bad LG didn't know either. I couldn't, I'm I couldn't name you a, didn't I couldn't know. name a single fleet with Max on until, unless the one you just told me. <laughs> Stevie Nicks. I knew she was a singer, but I had no clue. Like it was Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. That's... And I had no clue the guy's last name was actually Fleetwood, whoever you just named. Mick Fleetwood. Yeah, we yeah. need to do we need to do it. We need to pick a day of the week and you quiz me on white, I quiz you on black, and we have some fun with it. Right. No, we need to go out and make we need to make you do white people shit. Like we need to go hot like, ballooning. Well, like snowboarding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wakeboarding. Or, or, yeah. or like hiking for no reason. Let's go hiking. I went hiking today. I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, wait, was that today? I saw Nina posted it. Was that today? That was yesterday. Sunday. Yeah, yeah, Sunday we went hiking. Or yes. that was Sunday. Yeah, that was yeah, Sunday. yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't understand how that's become a white guy thing, though, hiking. I think okay, it kind of so is here this. in America, but people hike let me you know, ask all you this, over the world. Mike, okay. On your hike, yep. how many black people did you see? Well, none. <laughs> You know why? Because in the black man's mind, we think mountain lions. So it's I automatically. Know, mountain lions. We, were, I we, were, we, were, we were over by the fucking quarry. There's no <laughs> But in my mind, I'm thinking black bears, yeah. mountain lions, okay. venomous squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there might be some Dude. scorpions or something. <laughs> See what I, I don't want to get bit on my balls by a scorpion. Jeez. I, I only hike when it's worth it at the end. Like hiking at midnight to catch the sunrise on top of a mountain at 5 a.m. Right. right. Well, Now, I did do the second highest mountain in Phoenix when I right? went to Super Bowl. I, I I don't know how high I was up, but I, I saw your pictures. Yeah, I, with, I almost with cried town, when I got yeah. to the top. Cause I didn't think, cause it, I was a good 10 times. I was like, I got to turn around. I'm going to turn around. And then the, what's worse about climbing a fucking mountain is on the way down. It's harder. It's just as hard as the way up. All right. Well, well yeah. When, when you get to Colorado Springs, go oh, to Pikes no. Peak. You can drive that up there. That's there. You can oh, drive okay. up there. Yeah. 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 They have a, they have but a my ears are easy still way. Popping. No, yeah, that th now that thing you did at training camp is nothing compared to Colorado. That's legit mountaining. You should already be acclimated by the time you're you're about to hike it. I've had I've what had thin air sickness. Oh, you can get sick. Yeah. I, oh yeah. yeah, you, yeah. Can get, you can get legit sick. Uh huh. We had to. Me and Nina were hiking in Colorado okay. a couple of years ago, and we got up there. Were you high? Were you high before you went up? It's it's Colorado, of course. No, I hadn't been smoking though, but uh, oh. we were li we were literally high. I mean, we were ten thousand feet above sea level for sure, oh, at least no. if not more. We were like, whoa, okay, it was beautiful, but we got it got to the point where okay, we had to stop and come back down because we're not used to it. We Altitude were, sickness is no joke. It is no joke. It was either I'm oh, like, so that's we gotta, real. For real, oh, yeah. we either need to turn around and go back now, or I'm gonna pass out. It was bad. It can put you out for a week. Yeah, and it'll fuck you up bad. So, so, so I know when NBA players go to uh, to Denver, they say they're, they're the first quarter. That first, their lungs are literally burning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so Denver's not even in that. the mountain. Denver's down below, but it's so yeah. the state's so high up. 
that there is definitely a thin air issue. They could never put an NBA court up in the mountains. It wouldn't work. You couldn't do it. No, any sport for that matter. Denver's right. Denver's low by comparison to other areas in Colorado. But yeah, even even in Denver, guys get winded real easy. And in, I think Utah has the same issues. Oh, yeah. I think, it yeah, also Utah does since too. the air is so thin, it affects the trajectory of the ball. The ball will actually travel further because the air is so thin. See. That's what I would always say about the Denver field goal kickers. Like when they would break records, like 64 yards, well, shit. Sure. It should go farther. Yeah, for sure. All right. Show brought to you in part by Reroof, the official roofing company of in the building. Uh, right, uh, so, I, I was, so I, I, as we were talking about white people shit. <laughs> white people. So I guess I'm, I'm, I'm going to ask a question that I know the answer to. Oh, have you, shit. have you ever heard of Wim Hof? That's a person. No. Wim no. Hof. Wim Hof is one of my spiritual gurus. He does not know it, but he is. He's a, he's from Holland. Okay. And he has he leads people on these spiritual retreats where they basically dress up like they're going to the beach, but they're in the they're in the snowy caps of Holland. They go up they go, they go mountain climbing with no clothes on. <laughs> and now, they, they don't they get jump no in frozen lakes. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get no more yeah. white than that. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. That's good <laughs> shit. Ice baths. Okay. The last, the last, have you ever had an ice bath? Well, when I, you know, my brief career in high school soccer, I used to have to get in there like a right. couple times for a week. recovery. Yeah, for right. sure. So it's, Wim be- Hoff- it's nothing better. Nothing better. Mm-hmm. So in the 90s, it was Wim Hof who got this. He, he brought ice baths mainstream to clearly white people. Um, no. But uh, now athletes do it to swear by it. Uh, your boy, The Rock, he takes an ice cold shower every single morning to get, every, to get his body in sync and to get him flowing. He'll take a warm, he'll take a hot shower at night, but in the morning, it's always, he puts it on the most cold level you can have it. Because of the impact it has on your vessels and your blood flow and shit like that, I was thinking that maybe you and I do an ice bath challenge one time. If you're up for it, I don't want you to do I'm any. Down. I don't want you to turn white. No. I just want you to do white people shit. No. Okay. So. <laughs> oh no. Okay. So I don't know Wim Hop, but a few people that I trust and follow on YouTube or okay. Instagram or whatever do ice plunges. Okay. Day, yeah, I, daily. I feel like the ice bath isn't really a white person thing anymore because, like, every no, that, single not... athlete does it now as, as therapy Correct. after working out. And but stuff. It's, but it's, you really said going up in the in 90s. The... No, I, he yeah, needs to do a polar bear plunge. That's oh, what that's white yeah, yeah, people yeah. shit right there. <laughs> yeah, no, I ain't doing that. But I'm down to do an ice bath challenge. Let's see who can. Right, I mean, but the thing it. is, once we, once we both, I remember Kevin Hart was doing that show. I forget mm-hmm. what it was called, where they would hop in the ice tub together, and they would enter. He would interview at different athletes. Okay, there you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but he got that from white people. <laughs> we invented. No, we invented the ice. No, no, no. The way you the way you said it, like, oh, they put on beach clothes and they go up in the mountains. Well, and that, jump, like, yeah, that. That's why. Yeah, that's different. Shit. But like, yeah, no, yeah. there's there's a bunch of YouTubers that mm-hmm. swear by sure. uh, the sauna and swear mm-hmm. by ice plunge. That's I've heard cool. the sauna has. Fantastic benefits too, but the sauna is that dry heat. It, it makes me uh, feel nauseous. Yeah, no, I, I'm, I'm same. I, I don't like sitting in saunas too long. All right, it's re-roof. I can't. I will get Rudy on a roof. He's proven that over the last couple that. weeks. Uh, it yes, is sir. the official roofing company of this show. It is re-roof. Get yourself an instant quote today by calling him at seven two six eight 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 roof. Their website is roofoftexas.com. If you call them, you will hear me answer the phone. I am the recorded voice you will hear. Mention Thunderdome. They want to hear from you. This is a new company in town. They just got up and rolling three weeks ago, and they already have had a handful of Thunderdomers reach out about perhaps going out to their, their place and looking at their roof. Not only did they do regular homes, you know, private houses, they do commercial property too. So whether you have a little one room building that you have your company based in or your uh, 800 room hotel reroof can handle anything commercial and residential it is reroofoftexas.com get an instant reroof uh, quote today at reroofoftexas.com okay over the weekend all right have you been able to see any spurs at all where you, i'm assuming 
As no. So did you see any of the of the uh, win over the I Warriors? I saw that they I saw they beat the Warriors without Wimby. There was no Wimby. There was no Curry. Yep. So I think me, you, and LG were the only people that probably saw that game. Right. All I can all I can say though, at least, and I know, and of course, last week I I gave them credit when they played hard and lost. Even though there's no Steph Curry, what I have seen, and you can't deny it, whether they win or lose, and I know there was no Steph, no Devin Vassell either, by the way. Right. Some of these, some of these kids that have sucked the better part of the year, have all of a sudden, maybe it's because they realize that the end of their careers in San Antonio could be here. They don't get their shit together. Or they've decided to try to make another demo tape for their next team. Whatever it is, this team's playing better. And I'm encouraged by they that are. as we get into the stretch. They're, both playing, teams play better. they're playing better. They're, they're both playing. I mean, they are playing a lot better. And um, that Champagne might be the second best shooter on the team behind Devin Vassell. Well, and Wimby, obviously, but you know, yeah. I, but, I mean, I'm not even. I'm talking about the three ball. I'm talking about the three ball. He's probably the second best shooter on the team, and I'm not even looking at percentages or anything. I'm just going off of my eye test and his stroke. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I was in. I've, I've been encouraged by the play too. They've been playing a lot better. I mean, yeah, they're gonna have their hiccups, but you know, me being the asshole that I am, I'm like, damn. Well, for the record, it with- once I found out Wemby wasn't playing, I did not watch. And not one minute. I didn't even look at the highlights. I heard they won. I saw the score. That was it. All right. If Wemby ain't no. playing, I'm not interested. No, I've been wondering about how you're killing your time out there, if you've been able to see any ball or anything. Because I know you have busy no. days, but you're also a family man. You're used to being home with a bunch of people. That's, what are you doing uh, that's with your downtime? That's been rough, um, not being seeing the girls every day. But, I mean, thank God for FaceTime. Mm-hmm. Man, really, to be honest, man, shit. I get a little something to eat, and I just go in my room. Like, I went, we went um, to dinner in Little Rock one night. Mm-hmm. But other than that, man, I've been in my room. I just eat at the hotel and just been in my room, vegging out, sleeping. You know, I may have a go to the hotel bar, have a couple drinks. All right, yeah. well, I've been... Like I'm Little Rock in this city that I'm in, I'm in like Sumter, South Carolina. Sumter. Okay, Sumter. Sumner, Sumner, Sumter. Sumter. So you fly, you okay. fly into Sumter. So you fly into Columbia, and okay. the base is in Sumter. So I'm saying in Sumter, Sumter. there's you got Applebee's, <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings, <laughs> nice you know what I'm saying? Street, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like you got it's it ain't not, in the first two cities. I've done you know, it's nothing to do. So, you know, just watching Sports Center on repeat. So, yeah. What's I've the been name of the day. base? Shaw. Well, Little Rock was Little Rock Air Force Base. The one I'm gonna at now, well, I'm not mm-hmm. actually staying on base, is okay. Shaw Air Force Base in Columbia, okay. South Carolina. Some <clears throat> and right. Shaw is a Shaw is a mission base, meaning when shit hits the fan, they scramble F fifteens from here. Like when some shit goes down, like 9-11 goes down, Shaw's like, boom, get some guys in here. So I wonder yeah. if this is the base where that 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 jet that crashed took off from. I bet I think it is. Really? I wanna say, yeah, I think so. I'm not sure, but yeah. yeah. So we're not gonna have as much okay. access at this base as we did in Little Rock, because mm-hmm. this is a no bullshit type base. Yeah. So I've yeah, always but, uh, heard we'll that see how you're it not works. I doubt you'll have time. It's probably too far, but you're not What's that up? far. Had you had a day in a car, you're you're not you're not far from Charleston. I've always heard that Charleston, South Carolina, is one of the great cities in this country. Really, it, it, it sets on a beach. It sits on the Atlantic Ocean. There's a lot of great golf there. It's uh, Hilton Head is right outside of um, Charleston. It's one of the see, most the historical thing, cities in the country. See the only okay. Well, that's interesting because the only thing that I know about South Carolina is obviously Myrtle Beach. That's right. it. Right. No, you're near you know what I mean? here, dude. Yeah. But the, well, those, the ocean uh, scene is beautiful. Those Gamecocks, Lady Gamecocks or Lady Hens. Lady Gamecocks. They were, yeah, they were fist to cuss with LSU today. It got kind of physical. Or I saw that. It got kind of physical. I saw that. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. You got Don Don Staley's a badass. She is and, a badass. And uh, they've taken over college basketball. For but, sure. but late punch, the idiot who decided to run on the court because his sister was playing oh, to go help <gasps> to go help his sister fight a bunch of girls like what the dumbass fu- what the fuck is this he's, 
hope he goes to jail. Like, what are you yeah, going to do? Dumb. Like, okay, it's your sister. Like, if you're, let's say your sister was playing in a pickup game with a bunch of dudes and a fight mm -hmm. broke out. Yep. Get out there. But what the fuck are you going to do with a bunch of females that aren't even fighting and come out of the stands and onto yep. the court? Like, yep. nobody thinks you're a badass. Nobody... Like you can't defend that. Punch that idiot. He, no. his sister plays at LSU. I forget her name. I don't need to know her name. But and the great Caitlin Clark did what she did yesterday too. So there's your college basketball <laughs> women's basketball update. Well, I hope LSU loses early because I've got no time for that redneck bitch head coach they got. Well, you, don't like, you, you don't like you don't like Kim Mulkey. Got what no Kim Mulkey do Kim to Mulkey. you? Oh, she said a bunch of shit about oh, okay. um, Brittany gotcha. Griner after Brittany That's won right. that bitch a championship. Mouthed off about Brittany Griner. She's just, she's got the red ass all the time. Maybe she fits in great there. I don't know. But, uh, I well, mean, you know what's good, obviously. About that, won though, a title. I, I'll agree with you in this sense. Like, while Brittany was winning titles for you, you had, you knew what Brittany was about then, but you didn't say nothing. Nope. But then once she leaves, then you want to talk about God and Baylor being private and this like come on man yeah yeah and so we're talking get, about Baylor of all the places right ba <laughs> I don't on. Baylor should never praise Jesus again in public with the <laughs> shitty history they have, those assholes have right sorry that's and I can't stand that school and she and I when she was there I really couldn't stand the school because she just she comes off to me as just a, a, a four letter word that rhymes with punt. Jesus. She's no Pat Summit. <laughs> God she's knows no she's Pat no Pat Summit. Pat Summit was awesome. All right, show brought to you in part by RNR Auto Glass. Hate to be so ugly and harsh, but uh it's true. I mean, I don't I don't I don't I don't like Kim. I don't like her at all. All right, all right, all right. Uh all right. what else? Did you did I I texted you? You probably can't put it up, Me? can you? No, I'm talking to LG. Oh. We had a Thunderdomer mm -hmm. meet Prince Harry over the weekend. Do you see that? You mean former Prince Harry? Correct. Yeah, yeah. He turned his back on. The, Are you serious? On, yeah. So a, a, for real, a, for real. Yeah, a guy I know who's a longtime Thunderdomer, uh, David Empson. He's the vice principal at Clark High. So he was one of only six people in town chosen to go and host, for lack of a better term, Prince Harry and his wife Markle, Megan. Harry what and Megan fuck? have been here the last couple of days while you've been out of town. So where is here? San Antonio. What? Well, what so I'll tell you why. So All Megan right. Megan had an art show that she was a part of at South by Southwest up the street in Austin. But since okay. they were so close to San Antonio, they wanted to come down and see San Antonio and they got taken to the uh, the neighborhood place, which is over on the inner west side. The neighborhood place is a charitable building that does a lot of great works in in the city and one of the things the neighborhood place has done is help set up Afghan refugees after the war come here and settle. That's why we have so many Afghans now that live in town. And so Harry and Markle, uh, Ma Ma Megan Markle came down and my buddy Dave over at Clark High, he is, he is a, you and I talked about the cricket scene here in town recently. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so. Because of the cricket scene, David has gotten to meet. David's a big part of the Afghan community, so David helped introduce Prince Harry and Meghan wow. Markle to a bunch of Afghan leaders here in the Afghan community, and hung out. and And also, Harry and uh, Meghan also met with some Uvalde families while they were here the last couple of days. Awesome. But anyway, that's awesome. It was very cool. You know, we've 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 talked about Harry a little bit over the years, but my buddy David got to got to meet Harry and put it on Twitter and stuff. So does he still claim put the prince in front of his name? I don't know. Because he's, he's not royalty anymore. No, I know. Yeah. And they don't have last names. So I guess he just walks around like a soccer player all day. He's, I'm Harry. Yeah. And this, what's his birth so, certificate say? I think it says Prince of something, Sussex or whatever. Yeah, it is. but he yeah. gave up the. the he did. Crown. He no, did. Yeah, renounce. He gave up the royalty, so there's no more prince. But let me ask that. this: So, when you're when you're okay, yes, I get it. He denounced his throne or whatever. Do they still have to travel with? A thousand people like protection. No, he you know recently I mean? he recently got rejected by the British seek whatever their secret service is. Yeah, he's on his own. Yeah, he has no security detail unless well, he hires. Unless he them. hires them, yeah. he's paying for it. Unless yeah. he hires them. Yeah, man. He doesn't have the royal guard anymore. Yeah. That's for sure. No shit. 
Yeah, he's on his own. Although I will say this, and I've said this before, look, I'm not into the Royals and I don't know everything in the ins and outs. I don't keep up with that shit. It's basically reality TV. However, of all of them, and it's, I mean, I just, I say this loosely because you don't really know. Harry always struck me as the guy that was probably the closest to being normal of all those Royals that came up in the last 20, 30 years. Well, clearly, clearly. clearly. I mean, clearly. He, he wanted yeah. no part of the shit. So yeah, he was Yeah, different. he was done. Absolutely. But, married, a, married an American, black girl. I didn't sit well with grandma. And he's like, well, fuck you. I'm out. Deuces. We're moving to L.A. and this is my wife. Deal with it. And a matter of fact, I don't even want to be the prince anymore and just katow. I don't think he ever wanted to be prince to begin with. And all the shit that went so down is, with him and his wife, just that put it over the top for him. And he was just completely just done with it. What does he do for money? Is he already filthy rich? Oh, yeah. Well, he he wrote a book called The Spare, which I thought was pretty funny. Uh, he mm -hmm. made tons of money on the book. And he makes oh, insane okay. amounts of money doing appearance fees, no doubt. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, he's loaded. He's, he's at, but he's he still more got his dad's. And he was in the will at the time when... when Whoever passed fast, I don't his keep mama, up with the royalty. Diana, right? Okay. Yeah, it was his mom who, who, okay. who so got he's, killed. He's, the car. I'm, I'm sure he got a check when the queen bit the bullet as well. Probably got some inheritance. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. She didn't bite a bullet, I don't so up. to speak. She kicked the bucket. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so when they were getting married and shit on television, I yeah. wasn't paying attention. I don't know what's going on. I can't. I don't know what that means. But that's I, white I people shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of feel though like, and this may be wrong on my part. I kind of feel like once Megan found out that she was a strain on the family, mm -hmm. she should have bowed out. Well, she loves that boy, and he loves her, and they decided to go it alone. And her, by the way, she's got crazy in her family too. Her daddy's nuts. He he calls the big well, stink too. She was great in Suits. Like I watched a lot of Suits. Okay. I didn't watch it on the real HBO, whatever it was on. I, I binged it on Netflix. I thought she was pretty good in that. I hadn't seen anything she's done. I never heard of her Me until neither. she hooked up with Harry. Oh, Didn't really? Yeah, she was on. She was a, one of the. Yeah, she was a, one of the main characters in that okay. show, Suits. Uh, whatever. All right. Anyway, I've been. Uh, I'm listening, but I've been also kind of. I'm reading up on Sumter, South Carolina history here. <laughs> Shit. What, do, right. what do I need to know? Because I haven't looked at all. Well, it was founded by white slave owners. <laughs> oh my god! Are you being for real? I mean, well, yeah. I mean, it goes back to the revolution. Well, shit, that is one of the most. His, dude, you're in one of the most historical towns in the country. All right, it uh, is South Carolina. Yeah, South. Uh, all right. So <laughs> exactly. on Wikipedia, in, okay, in, in, incorporated in Sumterville in 1845, the city's name was shortened to Sumter in 1855. It has grown and prospered from its early beginnings as a plantation settlement. The city and Jesus. county of Sumter bear the name of General Thomas Sumter, the fighting gamecock of the American Revolutionary War. That town is where the fighting gamecock became a thing. He was wow. the fighting gamecock back in the day. Good times, man. Sumter grew into a major industrial center in the 20th century. Palmetto Pigeon Plant has grown into one of the largest producers of Cornish game hen in the world. That's actually good eating. You ever had hen? You ever oh, had yeah. Hen? Yes, sir. That's good Absolutely. eating. I like it. All right. You want to know the demographics? <laughs> 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 now, there's, yes. there's a lot of black folks in South Carolina. Let me see what it is. Okay. Oh, no. There's actually more black people in Sumter than white people. I'm seeing Four, that at my hotel. 48. 48% 48 African American, 40% white. Only 4% Mexican. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so, they all work at the restaurants. Jesus. So, yeah, my <laughs> hotel. I'm not at the best hotel. I'm not at the best hotel. Yeah, it doesn't look I'm like not. the uh, the 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 Bellagio there behind you. Just saying. No, I'm not. I can't turn the free. AC down. I can't it's turn free. the AC down. The uh, fire alarm thing is beeping. I got the door closed though, so y'all probably can't hear it because they had to upgrade me to a suite. <laughs> That's the suite. So, yeah, I'm not. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, man. It's uh the the the, the lady who's checking people in. Her kids are here. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> okay, her kids are like at work with her. Is it like yeah. a bed and breakfast. <laughs> 
Right, the, yes. <laughs> yes. Not, notable people from Sumter. Ray Allen. Okay, let's do it. Ray Allen. No way. That yes, Ray sir. Allen. Yep. Uh, ja Morant. Uh, let's see. People I've I've actually heard of, let's see, that I can uh, – those are the two biggest athletes, Ja and Ray Allen. Ja and Ray right. Allen. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I might cool. have to incorporate – I got to incorporate that into the show. That is pretty cool. Uh, da, 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 da. Lots of military people because of that base. A lot of people go there. like Kind of like here, they get stationed there and they fall in love with the area and they stay. Uh, Columbia what? look Columbia look way better. Where we flew into look way mm-hmm. better than something. I have no doubt. Yeah. Uh, God, I don't. Lee Bryce, the country singer. I bet y'all have never heard of him. No, of course not. Well, I, I, we can talk about him another time. Looks like just those two basketball players. As far as like super. But no, man, people. this is a. That's cool. This is a. This is definitely um, being briefed. I'm going to use my military terms. Mm-hmm. Being briefed. This is a very, very, very important um, Air Force base. It is Air Force installation. So. I'm looking forward to uh, finding out some history on it and, and spending a week here. Not All right, a week, man. All right. but three All days. Right. All right, man. All right, so the, the history of Sumter is brought to you by R&R Auto Glass, <laughs> the official <laughs> auto glass fixer of in the building right there by the airport at 281 in Tacoma. Whether you have side window damage, sunroof issues, back windshield, whatever it might be, it is RNR Auto Glass. Hit them up, mention us, and get yourself a hookup. 210 340 2588 or rnrautoglass.com. rnrautoglass.com. Okay, so what is uh what does your day look like the rest of the day? Like what are you anticipating? What can you tell us that we won't get the CIA uh, knocking on the door? Just a lot of uh a lot of time. Well, you know what? And you said this in our text the other day. I can't really complain about how long the day is because most of my day as the talent is waiting on them to set up and tell me mm-hmm. where to stand yeah. and get info. I do. I, you know what? I'll, I'm going to apologize. No, I'm not going to apologize to LG, but I, now I get it. It's not just LG. These people that work behind cameras are, are assholes. They're like, that looks like shit. I hate it. <laughs> Fuck that. Move it. Your fucking camera. You're in my yes. shot. Back Welcome up. Welcome to my Move world. Move your fucking foot. <laughs> that fucking shield light doesn't work. Stop flashing the light. Rudy, stop moving your left Hold hand. Up. I'm like, God damn. LG, Something my bad. It ain't here. just you. No, no. Oh. And I'm I'm against the 12. The 12 hour day is standard in the motion picture and reality TV industry. That is a standard thing. Usually it's 15 to 18 hours, but yeah. I am totally against that. If I ever have a production company, we're working 10 hours max. And that's only if we absolutely need to. Eight hours would be the norm in my company. Yeah, I, I'm not. I mean, look, it's been it was some long days, and I'm not complaining at all. But yes, they, it's it's a lot. Are they catering again, to I you, thought was, Mr. Johnson? Would you like a coffee? Do you need do you need anything here? How was your lunch? Let no, me take your lunch like order. That. I wish. No, 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 it's not like that. <laughs> oh, so they're not, not like doing that. it big time. No, <laughs> they're doing it no, Air no, Force no. style. Yeah, well, no, look where it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I love. Yeah, I love it. No complaints. I love you, U.S. Air Force. All right. Well, man. Air Force services. All right. All right. All right. We went over. I went, I'm sorry. I went a little longer today. What time is it? Oh, we went a little oh, longer. Yeah. We went, we went about an hour and three minutes. 103. Yeah. Yeah. So we went three minutes over today. No members only today. No members only. Rudy's traveling. He's abroad. I'm open Damn. to a members only at some point this week. I am. We're, we're, we're making it uh, work, dude. Look, we, this we'll, is, we'll do something. What you're doing is cool, and we're going to accommodate it. It's cool. It's fine. It's yeah, we can't can call it. ourselves... We can't call ourselves Military Town USA and then not respect what's going on. Exactly. But we'll do yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. What we'll do, we'll come up with something cool to do for them to make up. For, for sure. It. We will. We will. Not that we have to, but All we right. will because we love them. All right. So, All right. Hey, man, have a good day. Thanks, Holmes. I'll, I'll see you tomorrow. Stay in touch. More, Appreciate more, y'all. Yeah, keep posting. I'm enjoying all the military stuff in the background. All right. Love y'all hard. Right, see you, man. Peace. Love you. Peace. This program was made possible by contributions from viewers and listeners like you. Thank you. You're still here? It's over.
Go home. Go.